That's where we're going to start this morning. Um, don't pay any attention to Evan. Evan's back there speaking. He likes to he likes to debate with me a little bit about the word. When Evan was still in mom, uh, Evan would bounce around during the message in mom's stomach, and it's just what he would do. And so now he's out, and he's found his lungs, and Evan likes to debate with me about the word of God as I'm preaching. So, so that's okay. So we're going to turn in our Bibles to Matthew 23. And it's going to be uh, verse 25. As we begin to go, I have to put on my second pair of eyes. I noticed that allergies are really prevalent today. Um, yeah, can I get an amen? Because, uh, <laughs> I mean, I woke up this morning and I thought I was going to have to unglue my eyes. And uh, I was like, oh, I, I feel bad for everybody that has allergies. So we're starting a series this morning on living in the abundance of grace. But until we can understand grace, we still have to, we have to look back a little bit at and what we came from, and what a lot of people still like to live in, and that's Don't the see law. Don't see like all right, now, expert. in Leviticus, it talks about all the laws that God gave Moses to give Except to the people the of Israel. In the day. All right, and so Moses came down, and he had all these things, and the Levitical priests um, said, okay, here's what we've got to have. So we know there's a lot of law that's in the Old Testament, all right, but... Grace abounds so much more after the death and birth of Christ. And so that's what we're going to look at a little bit today, is I want you to understand something. When we live in the law and why the law was created, I think you'll find this interesting, because as I was studying this out last night and this morning, um, God said, I gave the law because I wanted you to see exactly how unrighteous you were. All right? Because we thought we were righteous. All right? We thought, look at us. We've got it all. All right? So, in Matthew 23, verse 25, the Bible says this. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees. You hypocrites. You clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, first clean the outside of the cup and dish, and then the outside, or first clean the inside of the cup and dish, and then the outside also will be clean. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of the bones of the dead and everything unclean. In verse 28, in the same way, on the outside you appear to you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. I want to stop right there. Pretend it's Christmas. My wife's going, ah, oh no, I don't know where he's going with this. And let's say you have this wonderful Christmas present. And it's a great box. And you're looking at the paper, and you know that paper is like, wow, somebody spent like hundreds of dollars on that wrapping paper for this gift. It's beautiful paper. It's amazing paper. And you're very delicately open this box trying to preserve the paper. <coughs> See, we do that a lot of times. We try, we try to preserve who we are. And we're very careful not to let people see what really is within us. So we open the box. We open the paper we, so gently and nice. We, we take a little cutter and we cut the tape because, you know, we don't want to ruin it. And so we open the box. And in the box is nothing but a big pile of poop. The box will stink, though. Okay. We thought it was going to be an amazing gift. We thought it was going to be beautiful on the inside because the paper was so lovely. But inside, 
It's all bad. So in this particular chapter, in Matthew, Jesus is saying, Woe to you that teach one thing, but live another way. What? I mean, woe to you that teach the letter of the law, but don't live within the letter of the law. Woe to you that teach that you have to live a certain way, but you don't live a certain way. Your cup is clean on the outside, but on the inside, it's full of crud and crap. Have you ever gone to the dishwasher before, taken out a cup? Because they're always upside down. And you're going, oh, it must be clean because the outside's clean. Turn it over and, ooh, there's a ton of stuff. Would you drink out of that cup? No, no. So before we can look at grace, look at what grace is, we must first understand what the law was meant to do. And I know this, this series may be confusing to some, but by the time we're done with this series, we should have a better understanding of what grace is all about and how to live, and I love this, in the super abundance of it. So many of us live under the law of life that we don't experience life in the fullest capacity that God has ever told us to live in. And we still live in sorrow, we still live in pain, we still live in all these things. We live in guilt, we live in doubt, we live in anxiety, we live in frustration. When God says, whoa, you don't have to live in any of that. Because my grace is sufficient. But you first have to understand what grace is. But in order to understand that, we first need to understand what the law is. There are so many people today, I was speaking to somebody the other day, that is so under Old Testament Levitical law that they can't even function correctly. Which is like, blows my mind. So what was the law about? The law was about works. Plain and simple. The more you did, the better off you were. And if you didn't do it correctly, then you had to go find a cow or go to sheep or whatever and kill it. That was Levitical law. You had to have a sacrifice. Something had to be sacrificed. And you, if you really want to get into Levitical law, read the book of Le Leviticus. It's about the Levites who were the priests back then. And the Levites were told how to do their sacrifices exactly step by step by step by step. And for everything they did, there was a different way to sacrifice the sacrifice. And so if we want to live in the law today, I, I would tell you to go invest in some sheep, go invest in some goats, go invest in some cows, go invest in a bunch of barnyard animals, because if you live by the law today, you are going to be a butcher. But you can't sell the meat. Because it all has to be done in a certain way and processed in a certain way so that it blesses God. So the word Leviticus means the Levites. And the Levites were the priests and rulers and these were the rules they were to follow. There were rules for everything and they had to do it in a very particular way. Because if they didn't do it correctly, start all over again. So you're going to spend your days out in the field slaughtering animals. Because if it wasn't prepared correctly, then God would not receive it as a blessing. Thank you, Jesus. I do Amen. not have to live that way today. Amen. Because I would be living out in the field because I know I would never get it right because I can't remember 20 minutes ago. Because there's always something going on. And I know you guys are the same way. You'd be going, oh man, I screwed up a step. Oh God, no. Go get another sheep. Okay? So. So many think we need to live by Levitical law, and it's not true. Yes, we must obey God. And, and here's, here's the word. We must obey God and live in His commandments. There's a difference between a law and a commandment. I can. You know what the law is? The law is made for people that do not understand what a sin nature is. 
And so the law today, the law that governs the land, is here to protect us and to keep those that do not understand how to be good, good. It's a different law today. It's a different law today. And we need to understand that. The law is meant to show us. But what was the law meant to do back then? The law was meant to show us how much of a sinners, how much sinning or sinners we actually had become. How self-righteousness had taken us away from God and obeying Him became further and further from our minds. The law was made to increase sin. I want you to listen to that. The law was made to increase sin. Romans 5, 28 says, The law was brought in so that trespass, so that trespass might increase. Because see, back then we thought we were right. If, if you were back then, and you are because this whole story, the Bible, the whole story of the Bible is about you. Just because you're sitting here and it's 2015 doesn't mean you weren't part of the Bible. One of your ancestors somewhere down the line in your lineage was sitting there listening to the Levitical priests tell you or your great, 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 that we were not going to be able to live by that law. As a matter of fact, my Bible says where the law is, sin abounds. Where the law is, sin abounds. So Galatians 3.19 asks us, why was the law given? It was added because of transgression. What is transgression? I think you'll, I think you'll like this. An act that goes against a law, rule, or code of conduct. And then at the end of the definition of that word, transgression, in bold letters, it says sin. Sin. Now that's Webster's Dictionary's definition of transgression. It's pretty interesting when a humanistic dictionary has sin rate as the last part of the definition. Sin. So they recognize that as something. And we back then had no problem disobeying the law of God. Much like today. We are watching the word of God become so watered down that God is not in the church anymore. I very rarely hear about the blood of Christ being mentioned when I listen to anybody doing a service on salvation. As a matter of fact, I've been in churches where I don't even hear the word salvation. The Bible tells me that no man will go before the Father unless he knows the Son. You must be saved by accepting the Son, Jesus Christ, in your life so that you may be able to experience the grace that God has for you. Amen. If you are not saved, you will, can never experience the grace of God in any shape or form because you are living by the law. And the law brings death. The letter of the law bringeth death. Grace brings life. Grace brings life. I love living in the grace of God. The more I give, and, then, and I know this is hard for people to understand, the more I give of who I am, never expecting anything in return, the more I receive the grace of God. The more I receive of who He is. The more I understand what my call is from Him. The Word of God says, until the seed to whom the promise referred had come, the seed in this case was Christ, which would bring an end to the law established long ago. Now if you look back 
The law was given through angels. And entrusted to a mediator. Moses was the mediator from God. Noah was a mediator from God. These guys were all mediators. Now, how many young people do we have in here today? You're not going to like this. <laughs> Please turn to Galatians 3 with me. It'll be Galatians 3, 23. Galatians 3, 23 says this. Before the coming of this faith. Before the coming of this faith. Okay? Okay? We were held in custody under the law, locked up until the faith that was to come would be revealed. That night, in a manger, cave if you will, faith was revealed. That night, the law was put to rest. There would no longer be a mediator that would be between God and us. Because God came to visit that night. God came in human form and said, here I am. You see, I don't think anybody was ready for that, especially the Pharisees or the Sadducees. Because they were still trying to tout the law to control the people. The law was used to control the people. The law in many churches today is used to control the people. If I can control you, I can get you to do what I want you to do. But if I allow you to live in grace, you get to do what God needs you to do. I'm not controlling you. I'm not telling you what you can and cannot do. I'm saying the Holy Spirit is going to talk to your heart and your heart's going to respond and your heart's going to walk with Him and you're going to be blessed in such a way that you want to give and give and give and give and give and watch what happens. Because there's no control for God. Moses was given to the people of Israel because, well, they couldn't get their acts together long enough to understand who God was. They got, they got frustrated. It's kind of funny that every time Moses took off to go speak to God, they freaked out and started building some crazy, strange idol. Quick, quick, get all the jewelry together. we got to melt it down and make a cap, a gold cap. And then Moses would come down and go, do you understand what you're doing? When we live in the law, we never enter the promised land. I will give you life, and I will give it to you abundantly. Pull your head out of your fanny. Start looking up at who I am and follow me. Don't follow the law. Follow me. Let's keep going. Let's see where was it? Galatians. So, so the law was our guardian until Christ came that we might be justified by faith. Now that this faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. So I want to look at this in a today type of illustration. Now parents, you'll go, all right, preach it, pastor, preach it. And teens, you'll be going, please, please, pastor, be quiet. <laughs> Young adults, well, you're kind of in the void right now, but you'll get there. So, today, parents, when they are in tune with God, all right, and they're living in the grace and the knowledge and wisdom and mercy of Jesus Christ, we go to God to ask how to parent. We are the mediators 
of the teenagers for life. We are like their tutors. We are called to teach them in the way that they should go. Much like Moses was called by God to teach the Israelites in the way that they should go. When our teenagers have been taught correctly, I know a lot of teenagers hate the word no today. But when they understand that no is for their protection, right. not just because we're parents and we want to be mean, right. then they come to an understanding when they're older that, oh, I know how to live. Amen. See, at some point in time, the Israelites figured out, oh, well, we were being told the correct thing so that we could enter into the promised land. Amen. So young people, your parents aren't telling you what to do because they want to be mean and nasty. They are telling you, they're telling you what to do because there's a promised land that will come. So quit building golden idols of ridiculousness to appease your friends, to make them think that you know what you're talking about. <laughs> because you, I'm sorry. <laughs> because, <laughs> because you don't. Because you don't. I look back, and thank God my mother's not here right now. <laughs> because whenever my mother used to tell me something, I'd go, like, no, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> My sister who's not here will tell you, oh, he is not the same person he was growing up. Amen. Yeah, amen. Because I was most likely to go to prison or die one of the two. But there was a mediator for the time of my life. Because I didn't know about faith. I had ignored faith. So young people, when you hit 18, you're going to have to come to a place, much like the Israelites did, where you're going to have to trust in your faith in who Jesus Christ is. You're going to have to trust that God's grace is real. Sometimes that happens, and sometimes it, it doesn't. <laughs> if we do not apply what we learn, then life will be full of struggles. Life in the law is full of struggles. Why? Because we can never keep them all. When we were under the law, we were being taught to obey, and we couldn't. We lived in self-righteousness, having to sacrifice everything we had, because we continued to sin in absolutely crazy ways, more and more and more. In Romans 11, 6, it says, And if by grace, and if by grace, then it is no longer of works. Amen. I watch people do so many things to try to get into heaven, and all they have to do is go, Lord, I believe. They, they, they do works by works by works by works by works by works. There's no faith in God. Uh, I've been teaching... Our congregation how to have faith that goes beyond ridiculousness how to have faith that is just absolute crazy faith and cast yourself over the crowd all right it's like my nephew fishes with hot dogs and catches fish he has amazing faith that that chicken lips and butt wrapped in a skin is going to catch a fish. All right. Me? No. Give me good old fashioned real bait and the artificial stuff that's coated in something that makes them think there's a fish in the water. Red devil. But that's the kind of faith we need to have. 
is that whatever I put on the end of my rod and I cast it out, something is going to take it. So if I put my life on the end of the rod and I cast it out, then God is going to do something with it. That's faith. That's faith. Well, God can't use me because, well, I have a past. God can't use me because, well, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not studious in the Word of God. Well, God can't use me because, well, I, I am who I am. But the Word of God tells me that each person is a member in particular. Not everybody's the same. Not everybody's going to be the same. If we were, we wouldn't need God. We wouldn't need faith. God could program us to do everything he wanted us to do. So an if by grace, then it is no longer of works. Otherwise, grace is no longer grace. But if it is by works, it is no longer grace. Otherwise, work is no longer work. It is either one or the other. It cannot be both. Those are two different covenants. One is the law and one is grace. If you choose to be under one, then you are removed from the other. And in Romans 6, 14 and 15, it says, For sin shall not be master over you. I keep saying this to people, they look at me like I have three eyes in my head. You can live a sinless life. Amen. And people go, no, oh no, I've been told I'm a sinner. Yes, you are. I am. But I can live a sinless life. I do not need to let sin have dominance over me. Amen. I can choose not to live in that place. But, heaven forbid, if I choose not to live in that place, because then... Oh, I'm not going to have fun. <laughs> Mike, have you have not had fun the last two Saturdays? If you look at his Facebook site, you're going to see all these pictures of me. He's up this thing and then doing this thing and dancing and doing all that stuff. He's having fun. I love having fun when I'm going into a hospital and I'm visiting somebody. And I'm just pouring out what God has given me. I have fun when I'm in Portland and, and I'm sitting down next to a homeless person and I'm going, Jesus loves you so much. I have fun when I'm sitting with somebody that you know is bound by chains to drugs or alcohol. And I'm going, oh, if you only knew what God has in store for you. Let me help you find the way. That's fun. For me, that's fun. I have fun pouring out everything I have. God has taken me all over Europe to talk to young people, just to give them a glimpse of who God is and His graciousness. That's fun. I have chosen not to live in sin. I have chosen not to live in the bondage of the flesh. I have allowed God to cut the chains and free me. You do not have to live in bondage. You do not have to live in sin. You do not have to live in a dull, lifeless life. Because God has something better. And it's not by the law. It's by grace. His son paid the price for you to have life and have it abundant. You're stopping you. You are stopping you from experiencing that life. I'm hurrying up. For 
sin shall not be master over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. The law can never deliver us from sin. Living under the law was earn and achieve. Work of man. Living in grace is give and receive. That's the work of God. When we insist on living in the law, we are basically saying we don't believe in God's grace. We are saying we can't live in the new covenant. There it is. The new covenant instead of the old covenant. The old covenant was the law. The new covenant was grace and mercy. What's grace? We get what we don't deserve showered upon us. It's unearned favor. Because if we got what we were supposed to get, we'd get nothing. But the Word of God says we get poured upon grace upon grace upon grace upon grace upon grace upon grace. His grace is never, ever ending. It pours over us like a flood. When we live in the law, we live under the headship of Moses. When we live in grace, we live under the headship of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. John 1.17 tells me the law came through Moses, but grace and truth on that day at Golgotha came through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's where grace came. As he was on that cross, and as he was looking down, and you were in that crowd. He said, Father, forgive them. I, they know not what they do. When he was in the garden, he says, Lord, Father, take this cup from me. And God said, no, my son. This is my grace poured out upon my children. I wish we could know the things that the Father was saying to the Son that night and that day. Because you know God was speaking into his ear. Son, this is for them. Son, you are my deliverance. This is going to be the grace that they never earned, but that I must give them. So that they may have abundant life. In Romans 7, 6, and I'm going to close with this. We have communion today. And in Romans 7, 6, it says, but now we have been released. We have been released from the law. The shackles, the key, the life of Christ inserted into the locks, turned, and the shackles have fallen to the ground. We have been released from the law, having died to that by which we were bound, so that we serve, oh, here it comes, in newness of the Spirit and not in oldness of the letter. Now, I don't know about you, but when I lived in the oldness of the letter, I couldn't get it together long enough to say, Lord, <laughs> forgive me. Because every single day there was something after another after another. But now, because God's love was poured out so hugely on that day. I think of the grace of God. And I go, Lord, I don't want to live in a way that offends you. I want to live in a way that glorifies who you are. Every single day. And you know what the Lord says to me when I say that? 
goes, I want to pour out my blessings, the promises of who I am, all over you. I want to use you as a light. I want to use you to shine. Again, I'm going to say it. You can either whine or you can shine. I love that saying. That's going on the sign out front. You're going to whine or you're going to shine. Living under the law, we whine. Living in the grace of God, we shine. Please bow your heads and close your eyes. With every head bowed and every eye closed. Maybe you've never received Jesus Christ in your life. Maybe you whine rather than shine. I want to give you that opportunity today to shine like the morning star. But there's only one way to do that. And that's to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Would you want to live under the law and be bound to the law for the rest of your life? You don't want to live in the freedom of grace. The grace of Jesus Christ that is poured down every single day. There's just one prayer. I said earlier that you'll never stand before the Father until you receive the Son. And this prayer is simple. It goes like this. Father, I'm a sinner. I'm bound by the law right now. But Lord, I want my shackles released. Forgive me of all of my sins, Lord. Come into my heart, Jesus, and live redeem me from me redeem me from the sin of man redeem me from the choices that were made long ago in the garden come into my heart father and save me save me I give you my life now with every head bowed and every eye closed maybe you never received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and you said that prayer. And the shackles came off of your arms and your legs. You are no longer a prisoner. You are free. If you said that prayer today, and every head is bowed and every eye is closed, then I'd just like you to lift your hand real quick and put it back down. If you received Jesus Christ today, just put your hand up, put it back down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you received Jesus, don't be bashful. Don't be bashful. Lift your hand up. Show God. It's for anybody else. Father, you've seen the hearts, Lord. You know <coughs> the people. Father, I thank you for that day, Lord, where grace and mercy were poured out for me. Where the love that you gave us and showed us was so amazing. just is endless. Father, that no matter what I do, I know that all I need to do is say, Lord, Lord, forgive me. And your grace and mercy are poured out over me continuously. So, Father, we thank you, Lord. We love you, Father, and we praise you. Maybe some of you have put the shackles back on. Maybe you had a taste of that life. But, but through a process, you found those shackles and you put them on. I would tell you that redemption through God, that redemption through the Son, will allow the Holy Spirit to come down with the keys and unlock you again. Then take those shackles and cast them into the deepest sea never to be found again. Father, we thank you, we love you, and we praise you. In your precious name we pray, Father. Amen. You guys